Hi, 7th grade. So this week we're going to have another week of amazing online learning and we're going to continue with our Punnett squares. So last week we understood how to create Punnett squares and how to find genotypes and phenotypes. So what we're going to be doing is we're going to continue with our key points and we're going to take ourselves on a virtual lab. So on this virtual lab, you will have to complete a couple of pieces um, and it will be on a separate Google Doc form and it will be for a test grade because this is a lab. So I'm hoping that you are enjoying your labs as we go along um, and you will only have one assignment for this week and this will be our virtual lab. So I'm gonna go ahead and share my screen so I can explain how you're going to be uh, completing this lab and the forms that are going to be attached to it. Okay, so the first thing you're gonna do is you're going to go to your classwork and in your classwork, you're going to look for assignments 427 through 51. Um, you're going to have this virtual lab pop up at 7 a.m. on Monday. And you're going to start with the Google form that says 427 Punnett Square Lab. Then after you complete this quick watching of this video and the questions that correspond with it, you are going to jump into your Punnett Square Lab report. Okay? So your Punnett Square Lab report will look like this. Each one of you will receive a copy and each one of you will be able to edit it. So it has a website address that you will be clicking. So the first thing that you need to do to receive uh, the lab and to make sure that you're in the right place is to click on the link. This link is going to take you to what looks like this. This is a virtual Punnett Square Lab. So this is a virtual Punnett Square Lab. And then I'm going to be showing you step by step what you're going to be doing on here uh, after the, we read the directions. So the first thing is we're going to first open, of course, the Punnett Square Lab online. And then it's going to have a lab simulation. You're going to be looking at the question column on the left hand side. So on the left hand side, this is the question column. You're going to read the purpose and the objectives, and then you're going to complete the steps that are in the procedures. So let's go back so we can make sure we're doing the right thing. So the first thing you're going to do is you're going to click on the TV VCR and watch the videos. You're gonna read the background information in the question column under how can Punnett squares help predict the traits of offspring. And you're also gonna read the background information provided in the virtual lab by clicking on the information bar in the lab simulation area. And then you will answer questions one through five in part one. And then you're going to answer the questions from the lab. And then you're also going to have some lab questions that are going to be extension questions. And that will be where it says journal questions at the bottom. So we're first going to be starting with opening up what we're going to be doing. So this is what it looks like. And step one of this is going to be to open up the TV. So once you open up the TV, this Punnett square it's going predicts to the results of a cross. There's going to be a video that is going to explain to you what Punnett squares are. This is just a review of what you have already learned last week. When you're done with the TV, you're going to click the X. After that, you will open up information. When it comes to the information, you will be required to read the information. The reason that you're reading this, again, is just an overview of what we discussed in the last two weeks. It's also going to explain to you that you will be looking for uh, Drosophila melagangsters, which are our fruit flies. And you're going to be finding their genetic crosses along with their phenotypes and their genotypes. Once you close this, now we're going to move on to doing our scenarios. In order to be able to do this, you first have to click on the book, okay? This is where you're going to have to record the information on your journal. So you're going to look here at the top where it says the scenario number. You will add that scenario number to your table. So I would put scenario one. and then I'm going to fill this in. We did talk about ratio and I did explain to you on my other video on how to find ratio, but I will be showing you here as well. 
And these, this is the information that you're going to need in order to be able to understand what you're going to be putting in the lab. This is a little confusing if you just read it and not watch the video. So that's why we're showing you on the video. So back to the station lab. Once I'm here, I'm going to read the scenario. So my scenario says, make a cross between the following flies, a heterozygous gray body fly and a homozygous black body fly. Okay, so I need to first decide what is a heterozygous and what is a homozygous. So when I click on parent one, so I click on this arrow, and I'm going to first go with a heterozygous gray body fly. So I know that heterozygous means that it is a hybrid. So my hybrid cross is this one right here. So I'm going to click on it. That's going to put my fly right there. Then I'm going to go to my parent two. Sorry for the little blip, my computer went crazy. So for parent two, it says a homozygous black bodied fly. So I click on this down here again, and it looks like homozygous recessive because the letters are in lowercase. So now I will click on that one. Now I need to make sure that I have the correct answer for the parent. So I will check parents. And it is correct. So I'm going to record these answers inside of my table. So I'm going to go back to my table, scroll down to my table, and parent one was the first one that I put at the top. You need to remember what parent you are picking for parent one. So for parent one, I picked this top right here, so I have to put a G, G. So I come back to my lab. Then for parent two, I have to come back and remember what I put as parent two. So this is parent two. So I come back and I label parent two. Then it's asking me for the genotypic ratio of offspring and the phenotypic ratio of offspring. So I'm gonna come back to my lab. And now I'm gonna to have to add the, pheno, the genetic, the genotypes in here so that I can find out the phenotype and the genotype. So I know when I cross these two together, I'm going to get this one right here, which is a hybrid. And this one is also going to be a hybrid. And then when I cross this one and this one together, I'm going to have a recessive and a recessive. If I click check off screen, fill in the rest of the Punnett square it's going to determine the expected genotypes and phenotypes of all the offspring. It's going to tell me that I am incorrect because I still need to put in the pictures of the flies. So. I know that a recessive was the black fly and the hybrid was the gray fly. So I'm going to be looking for these and I'm going to be adding them in the correct place. So this would go here, this would go here because this is gray hybrid and then the black dominant recessive would go with the small or the lowercase letters. Then I will click check offspring. So how do I find my ratio? I know that there is four boxes. So each box represents one. So here I have two gray ones out of four. So I'm gonna come back to my Punnett square and my genotype ratio for my offspring is two out of four and two out of four. Why? Because I have two out of four that are going to be G, G, and two out of four that are G, G. Now it's looking for the phenotyp uh, phenotypic ratio of offspring. So I know, going back to my lab, 
that these are gray and these are black. So I'm going to put the same numbers, but now I'm going to add the colors because the colors are the phenotype. So I'm gonna put two out of four are going to be gray and two out of four are going to be black. I'm going to have to do this for all 10 scenarios, all 10. Now, once you complete it, if you click check offspring, it's going to make that noise. If it makes that noise, that means that you did it correctly. Then you click the reset button. That is going to give you your new scenario and you will do the same thing again. And as you can see, it's going to tell you different, different types of animals as you go through these scenarios. So make sure that you are writing the right scenario number and that you are writing the correct information when you are coming to your lab. If you do not have correct information, it will be counted wrong. So you will be able to find all of the information on the actual scenario part right here. When you are done, you click return and your lab is complete. Make sure that you complete all of your questions. And once you're done with all of your questions, it will save automatically. You will not have to share anything with me. All you need to do is open the document that is located in your folder. Do not create a separate document. Do not create a separate document. All of your documents will be located inside of this virtual lab assignment and in your lab report when you click on it. Again, do not create a separate Word document or Google Doc. You will be working on the Google Doc that is assigned to you inside of your Google Classroom. This sends me a message and tells me your name and that you have already submitted it. So please make sure that you are following the directions correctly. Have a great time with the lab and I can't wait to talk to you guys next week. Bye.